What's going on, everybody? It is Dad Bod here, and welcome back to, I believe this is the 10th episode. If you've been with me all this time so far, kudos to you. Uh, thank you so much for your support. I'm, I'm glad that you've been enjoying um, the walkthrough thus far. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we are actually going to warp back to the Ashina Depths, to the Poison Pool, to be precise. Um, this is the uh, Sculptor's Idol that we unlocked in the previous episode. And um, this is the uh, way forward to continue on with the main story. Um, so first thing we're going to do in here is make sure we take care of this enemy that's overlooking the area with their big cannon. Uh, we don't want to be interrupted, shall we say. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pop a gatching sugar. Because you want to be nice and stealthy. Um, because there are lots of gunners in this area, and there's actually a mini boss that we have to fight. Uh, dang it, I'm... I just want to freaking, there we go. Get the pellets, there we go. Um, and I'm also going to throw on my umbrella because the mini boss we're going to fight is, is another one of those snake eyes mini bosses. So you'll see when we get later in the game, we're just going to see kind of some duplicate mini bosses, if you will. So she's just chilling over here. Get the backstab. And if you can work it out, the best thing to do is to corner her right here and just relentlessly, uh, when she does the grab, just use your umbrella. And whoops, I fell off there. Dang it, that gives her kind of some uh, a chance to regroup. And I got her out of that corner. Um, but nonetheless, she's still kind of backed up against the wall, which is still fine. And, you know, just never stop. Just keep on at it. And before too long, you'll get that second uh, death blow on her. So, took care of her. Um, there are still some enemies around here. So you see that big dude with a cannon and my stealth, my gatchin sugar just wore off. So I'm going to get spotted by some of the other folks around here. One way to go about doing this is you can actually use the puppeteer ninjutsu. And then they'll, the, the cannon people, will, the, the one that you use the puppeteer on will actually start firing at the other ones. And, you know, well, that'll help you out pretty drastically. Um, heavy coin purse right there. Just making sure I get all the loot. Some of the loot's in the poison, unfortunately, while I'm being fired upon. Um, so the other one that we need to take care of is actually up there. So we'll go on and get get the ones up there. I think it's just one, but it might be two. Um, there we go. Oops, there we go. Got that deflect. And onwards and upwards we go. I can't remember if there's another one or not. By the looks of it, it doesn't look like it. I'm going to go ahead and jump over here, go all the way to the tippy top, because I think there's actually a uh, secret um, item that we can grapple to. Yeah. So no more gunners. We got all the gunners, thankfully. Some scrap magnetite. And then there's another uh, item hidden behind some of these rocks here some yellow gunpowder, some upgrade materials always come in handy. Um, <clears throat> you'll know, notice some stuff up there. We're actually going to loop around and get it in just a second here. So this is the way forward. Just drop down here. Um, and there's a guy who is in distress. Who or what did this to you? Large ape. Uh, we are familiar. We happen to be familiar with large apes. In fact, we just took care of one in the previous episode. Um, that is an easy to miss grapple point. So make sure you grapple up there because there's some stuff that we want to get. Um, you're going to have to crouch underneath here. But then when you pop up, there's actually a little side path you can take. So be sure to not overlook that. And right here, we have some yellow gunpowder, which is one of those items that we saw from below that we couldn't quite get to yet. And up here, there's a grapple point. 
And dun, 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 we have a hidden prayer bead. So make sure you don't uh, forget that. So let's go ahead and drop back down to where we were before. And we can actually carry on um, this away. And I believe there is a monkey here. So let's do the old death blow. And we get some more monkey booze. Um, we're going to be using some more of the uh, booze on Ishin and Emma because they have some more lore to discuss. And look what we have here. It just so happens to be the headless guardian ape. So precisely the reason why we're doing things in the order that we're doing them, because as I mentioned in an earlier video, we could have come here before. If you do that, you miss this boss fight because obviously if you come here before, you hadn't fought the guardian ape yet. And if you hadn't fought the guardian ape yet, um, the headless guardian ape is not going to be here. And so this counts as a boss fight. You get a memory for it. You get a trophy for it, the whole thing. So if you really want to complete the game, you have to do this optional boss battle. And um, before we engage, let's just make sure we are appropriately equipped. Um, we got our firecrackers. Uh, we actually are going to need the firecrackers in phase two of the fight. You'll see why. Um, and we got our pellets and healing and Akko and confetti. So I think we're good to go. So um, this fight actually, you know, as you could imagine, plays out a lot very similar to uh, how the second phase of the first Guardian Ape fight played out. Um, you obviously want to run away for this scream attack because it will terror you and that's an instant kill uh, if you do get the terror status. But his moves and his, his you know, kind of... He looks like a drunken monkey. Actually, I want the uh, spear for this um, to do this move. His uh, kind of drunken, drunken sword fighting skills are the same. He just kind of like wobbles and jabs at you in very much the same exact pattern. Once he does it overhead slam, uh, if you get a good, good deflect on that, it knocks him over and that's your chance to use your spear attack on him. And that does quite a bit of posture damage on him. And of course, uh, there's his uh, sweep attack. Oh, and he's going to do another overhead on me. I don't want to use the spear this time because I'm actually going to want to save some of my spirit emblems. So I'm just going to get the uh, death blow the old fashioned way just by attacking him. So that's death blow one. And now he runs back over to his hole and uh, he uh, summons. He summons his mate. And so his mate. Uh, it's actually not as hard to kill, but it is very difficult to manage the two together. Um, so, uh, you know, because as soon as you start attacking the other monkey, uh, the headless one just comes after you and starts being annoying. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, this, this, this one is susceptible to firecrackers. And actually, I need to equip my long spark because I did get the long spark and I forgot to put it on. And the long spark does... Uh, his, the uh, damage is a bit more, um, or I guess the stun is a bit more uh, profound. Let's get a longer stun out of it. So I'm going to run around here. I'm going to throw on my Akko Sugar. I'm going to throw on some confetti just because the odds are against me and I need all the help I can get. Actually, I need to get out of dodge and heal real quick. And if I can lure this guy over here, throw some firecrackers, get a few solid hits on. And my, it looks like my confetti never never got put on. That's a shame. Um, now I have my confetti. All right. And so the trick is is to try to get hits on this guy without the uh, headless one attacking you at the same time, or vice versa. Actually, if you... Ooh, that was close. If you kill the headless one uh, without killing the second one... Um, oh, there's, there's uh, death number one. If you kill the headless one without killing the second one... The fight ends right there, but it, as you could imagine, is it's hard to pull that off. So go go for it, do whatever uh, makes you happy. But good luck either way is all I'm saying because this is a very tough fight, um, as you could imagine. So I got about half of his health down, so we're doing okay. I'm gonna use some uh, firecrackers, get a couple. Hey, dang it, he see, he gets there so quick. That's what makes this fight annoying. Is that Despite having no head, he's he's too quick. Yeah, see, golly, it's hard to get a hit off. Um, let's top off health. I'm gonna throw the confetti back on just for good measure, and hopefully I'll get lucky here. 
get some stun. Oh, got a couple good hits in there. Um, all right, so he's almost gone. I'm going to throw some pellets on just to top off the health. Uh, let's see. Got a hit in. A couple more hits should take him out. All right, good. He's doing his overhead slam, which gives me a, a nice little window there. Get away from the scream. And a couple more hits should do this guy in. Oh, geez. As long as I don't die. Uh, he's got like one HP left. That would be a shame. All right, here we go. Got him. He's dead. All right, so now we can focus on the other one. And now that we're back to one on one, this should go by pretty quick. Uh, for me, the trick is just dispatching of that uh, other one as quickly as humanly possible. All right, so he's doing his jump and sweep attack, so just jump to dodge it. Now his overhead slam. There we go. Just going to wail on him. I probably could have used the spear, but oh well. Fortunately, since I got the death blow on his friend, um, that gives me uh, my resurrection ability back. So, and same with the um, same as the first encounter with the headless version of the guardian ape. Firecrackers do not work. All right, come around here. Do your sword stuff on me. Get some deflects. Oh, make sure I'm not too close for that. All right, does it twice in a row. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, all right, come on. There we go. There we go, the overhead slam. That's what I like to see. I could have used my spear there. Oh, well. I'll put my spear back on just in case I get another, I get another overhead shot. Jump over this attack. Hit him. Get some deflects here. Oh, nope. Jump over the sweep. And jump over this attack, get some hits in, and there we go. This should do it. I'm going to use the spear here, and this should be enough to get him. Oh, not quite, but close. There we go. And this fight is over. Get that finisher death blow. That is the Guardian Ape Part 2. Got our Shinobi execution in the house. And with that, the memory of the Headless Ape and another prayer bead and another prayer bead. How about that? The rewards are worth it. Um, so I definitely recommend not skipping this fight by coming to this area earlier in the game. And of course, he's still laying there. He hasn't disappeared yet in that pesky little centipede. So walk up close to him. You get another death blow opportunity. I suggest you take it. Use that mortal blade of ours. Rid him of the infestation. And there he goes. Immortality severed. And for our trouble, we get a trophy for doing that. Quite nice. And we get the bestowal ninjutsu, which then gives us the trophy for all ninjutsu techniques. Um, this makes, it bestows our blade uh, with, I guess it says, with the victim's blood. Extending its reach, cost spirit emblems to use. Activated after a backstab death blow, as with all other ninjutsus. The wolf discovered this technique upon beheading the foe, a foe with the mortal blade, forming a cursed sword from spilled blood. Though it bears likeness to the mortal blade, it cannot kill the undying. So this is actually, it's it's a pretty powerful uh, tool. Um, it uh, basically acts as a weapon buff, pretty similar to uh, how Divine Confetti works, but instead of using Divine Confetti as a consumable to activate it, um, you use spirit emblems after performing a backstab. So we now have four prayer beads. So let us enhance our physical attributes. Get that extra stamina or get that extra uh, vitality and uh, posture. Uh, the centipede will seek out a leader, often changing names out of loyalty. The centipede chiefs are known as long arms for their large talon-like weapons. Okay. And we can enhance our attack power because we have the memory of the headless ape. At one time, the guardian ape shared its den with a mate, but he alone became infested while the other passed away. Now, even the flowers offered in tribute to her passing have withered to dust. All righty. So, um, 
Let's see. We also have some um, skill points here that we can cash in. I'm going to go ahead and get the projected force um, skill. And I think this next one that I want to get is the ascending carp. So we'll wait till we get a second skill point for that. Um, let us rest to get all of our healing and whatnot back. Um, and I think that should do it. We're at vitality 16 and attack power 7 as of right now. So pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and put the umbrella back on. We got the long spark and the spinning shuriken. Okay. Sounds good. So the way forward is to grapple up here, and we've unlocked a new area. As I said before, if you come here earlier in the game before fighting the Guardian Ape the first time, you can just come straight up here without fighting any bosses. But again, I do suggest killing that boss because it gives you two prayer beads, a memory, a nunjutsu technique. So the rewards are definitely worth the tough fight. Um, so we're entering a new area of the game. Uh, we are greeted by two phantom... Um, what are these things called? Night jars. Um, and they're actually not that hard to kill. Their bark is worse than their bite. Um, and you'll notice for killing these things, we get 620 skill points, which at this point in the game is actually pretty, pretty generous. And it just so happens that we are right next to a sculptor's idol. So at this point in the game, this is actually one of my favorite grinding locations. Um, it is a very lucrative grinding route, so you can, if you want to, to get some additional skill points or sin or whatever, you just commune with this idol. You can shoot right back over here. If you do it right, you can get a backstab on the first on the first uh, ghost. And the other one, you just run over, just wail on him with your sword. Um, don't, yeah, just chase him and don't stop uh, attacking, basically. And you'll get both. And you'll see, you get some pretty solid... Um, skill points by doing this and so in my opinion this is the best grinding route in the game and you just head over back to the statue rest and then that respawns the enemies um you just head back over here rinse and repeat and easy kills for the most part and uh hefty experience points as well so definitely use this if there's a skill that you're kind of working towards that you really want and um you know you can get some good points so this area you'll notice like the ground level is is misty um you know that's just part of kind of how this area works um when you get later into the area the mist will dissipate so um see these chickens man they do some damage. I should have rested. Get my health back. I'll just use a pellet. I don't care. Um, and there are some good items down here. Um, so you can choose to, to search this now or later. It's really up to you. I'll just head up. I'll just, I might just drop on down. Why not? Um, there's some good stuff. And while the mist is here, you're going to have to deal with these like phantoms. Um, and so it might be worth your while to just wait because once the mist dissipates, the phantoms are gone as well. Um, it's up to you really, but there's some good items. And of course there's a headless down here as well. I'm still not at the point in the game where I'd, where I want to really fight the headless because they are extraordinarily powerful and you basically have to use divine, divine confetti to kill them. Um, so I just got those two items and just got out of dodge. I'm going to be killing the Headless later on in the playthrough. Not too much later, but definitely later. Um, and once once you have the proper tools, they're not that hard to kill. Uh, so you get this item, some scrap magnetite. And I think that's about it for everything down here in this section. Um, as I said, if you don't want to mess with all these stupid ghost apparition things, you can just come down here later after you uh, dispel the mist, and it's much easier. I don't know why I didn't wait till later. I just was impatient, I guess. But um, okay, so there's a guy over here we can talk to. Hey, hey, you! <laughs> if you know the path of Buddha, would you slay one who opposes it? 
One who opposes the Buddha? Correct. <coughs> the one of whom I speak hides in an abandoned temple up ahead. He sealed away the village in a shadowy fog so that he can fool the villagers. An abandoned temple? Yes. It's an old building. <coughs> the door may be closed, but there should be a hole in the second floor. Okay, so there's someone uh, who is basically, uh, who created this fog to conceal a village that's ahead. And uh, in order, if we want to go further, we're going to have to take care of this. And he told us the secret. There's a hole in the second floor, even though there is uh, no proper door to go through. So let's keep that in mind. So we've got some pellets up here. Nothing else except for a rooster that we just disposed of. Um, so we can go up on this here log. And this takes us to the next section. A um, couple more roosters. Oh, I should have got the death blow there. I don't know why I didn't get the death blow there. That would have given me invincibility frames. I'm going to pop another pellet. Um, just for safety. And uh, so here, yeah, more fog, more uh, apparitions. Um, I, I don't even bother fighting them. We just got some bite down which is like that instant death thing, but it preserves your uh, resurrections. Um, we kind of went over that in a previous episode. We actually have the infinite bite down, reusable bite down item with that, what I think is a tooth of some sort that we got from killing the uh, tutorial guy at the, uh, at the temple, the dilapidated temple at the beginning of the game. Um, Oops, okay, there's a ghost ghost dog, but we want these items. Bite down, contact medicine, and light coin purse. Um, some more items down here. And uh, I'm probably missing some stuff, but that's okay. Just trying to look around, because there's lots of stuff down here. Okay, that's where we came in, I believe. Yeah, we, we started up here. Um, so this is the temple where that guy we just talked to is referring to. There's someone in there that's basically creating the fog. Um, thought there was a item over here. Maybe not. Yeah, these guys don't do a whole heck of a lot of damage. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. My finger slipped. Uh, oil. Um... Okay, I guess that's about it then. Uh, I think, actually, once the fog dissipates, I think there's a few more items that become visible that aren't visible right now. Let's see. All right, so we can't go in through here. As you said, we have to go up to the second floor. So to get there, there's kind of like a roundabout way we have to go. Um, so you can't just jump over there, unfortunately. Uh, so there's an area off to the side where you have to like climb up. Forget exactly where it is. Let's get some items while we're at it. Some more oil, some spirit emblems, and some more spirit emblems. Um, it's like a little cliff you have to go up. I think it's on this side. Yeah, there it is. Grapple on up here. You go this way. So there's some monkeys and a mini boss. We're gonna fight in just a second. You can also, whoops, you can also scooch along the wall here. Takes a, oh, I got sniped. That is lame. Not cool. All right. Definition of insanity, trying the same exact thing and expecting a different result. Um, where's the, who has a bow and arrow around here? Good grief. That's annoying. All right, I'm just getting trolled. I don't think I've ever been sniped off that wall before. I, I can't recall that ever happening. Um, get away from me. You're bothering me. Um, 
All right, now they took care of that loser with the bow and arrow, I think hopefully should be fine. I've never been, are you serious? Really, really? Where are you? Oh, okay. I don't even know how to get up there. There's an item up there. Can I climb up here? I forget how to even get up there. Uh, I guess you go over here and then jump. Yeah, looks like it. Ooh, adamantite scrap. All right. Stop it. You're being annoying. Nah. Thought I'd maybe be able to be close enough to wall jump, but apparently not. All right, so there's an item over there. I think we're, we killed the, the bow and arrow bros that were foiling my plans. Get this item, some snap seeds. And so uh, this is just another way back to, that's the first area we were. The headless is gonna be down there that we saw, but um, it was worth it for that uh, item we got there. Okay, so let's grapple on back up here and take care of some bidness. Um, there are some monkeys down here and, and of course, as I mentioned before, a mini boss. I'm gonna use the shurikens on the monkeys who don't know that I'm here right now, except for that one. So I'm going to go on and aggro the mini boss. What's up? Fistful of ash. And then there's actually some stuff over here as well. So this will perhaps de-aggro the mini boss so we can sneak up and get our backstab. And also there's a sniper monkey up on the uh, cliff over there that we want to take care of before engaging the mini boss. Um, I thought there was a grapple point. Oh, there's the grapple point. Okay. It's just the other direction. It's like, how do I get a get back up. There we go. Then we can grapple over here. Oh, he's still uh, got the aggro. Come on. Thought to go further away to get his life bar to disappear. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Um, do I need a Gatchin sugar? See, there he is. I think if I stealth kill this monkey, it should, uh... Did I equip the bestowal? I did. Perfect. So, I'm gonna do the bestowal nunjutsu on this guy. Death from above. On the mini boss. And this is basically a repeat of the Juzo the Drunkard from the Harada Estate. Actually, I'm going to throw my firecrackers on here. Oh, hey. Don't get poisoned. There we go. Can you see I got the bestowal nunjutsu equipped? Well, not anymore. Oopsies. Oh, hey, one HP strat. There we go. All right. Throw these firecrackers. You see the long spark, how the effect lasts a bit longer. It's quite nice. And easy as one, two, three. Some unrefined sake, prayer bead. Can I not jump up here? There we go. All right. So the way forward is to grapple, 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 grapple. Okay. And we got ourselves a lump of fat wax upgrade materials for some of the higher tier stuff. And this is the way to get on to the second floor of this here structure. And this is how we drop down. Um, this technically counts as a mini boss. 
Um, this is the easiest mini boss in the game. You literally just do a, a drop down death blow and then never stop wailing with your sword and you won't ever get hit. So this is the dude that's creating the fog and making everyone's lives miserable and makes it so he can't see anything and blocks our path forward. So we got a lump of grave wax um, used for occultic prosthetic tool upgrades of an advanced nature. A long suffered illness will see the growth turn large and blacker still. It's customary to run water over the site of an extracted growth. So used for some of the higher tier um, upgrades, prosthetic upgrades. So the mist has dissipated and the way forward has been revealed. We get some uh, uh, Yashiriku's sugar. Um, I don't believe I've been over this. I actually never use this weapon or this item rather. If you watch speedrunners, they use it excessively because what it does is it halves your health, but it doubles your attack output. So, you know, it's a risky proposition, but um, it can pay off in major ways. And, you know, that's why speedrunners like to use it because they don't get hit anyways. Heavy coin purse because they, they're not probably not going to get hit anyways. And um, it, it drastically increases the speed with which they can kill bosses and whatnot. Um, so you notice all of these apparition type enemies are gone. Uh, the ghosts and blah, blah, blah. Um, however, the enemies that I pointed out at the beginning of this area, I think we got all the, all the items uh, that I pointed out at the beginning of this area that I mentioned was a very good grinding location. They are still there. So quite handy indeed. Um, so the way forward is through here. You got to drop down a couple places and there's going to be some enemies that pop up and try to foil all of your plans. Yeah, so these apparitions, I guess these guys are immune from, um, they're immune from uh, the mist or whatever. They they still, I'm, I'm just getting hardcore trolled. My goodness gracious, I've never had this happen. Okay, I'm just going to activate this thing here and rest, reset the enemies. Um, so I guess those guys aren't uh, impacted by the fog, which is good because they give lots of uh, lots of experience points. So while we're speaking of which, uh, let's go ahead and get the ascending carp. Uh, increases damage inflicted upon po uh, inflicted to posture, and then here we have um, reduces amount of posture damage and um, recovers posture upon executing a successful death blow. So that's what I'm going for next because we get even more, um, or actually, no, this is posture instead of vitality. I, I misspoke there. And then, of course, we have access to the Ichimanji double. I don't really use Ichimanji, but some people do, and you can really abuse it, especially with Ichimanji double. I'm probably going to go for praying strikes next because there's some good stuff on this skill tree as well now that we have um, projected force. So uh, quite nice indeed. Um, all right, let us carry forward. Um, so there's actually a purple ninja dude over here, uh, that could spot you. You can actually, if you sneak just and hug the wall for dear life, you can actually just get behind him before he even notices you and backstab him. Um, and he actually, he, he drops some good upgrade materials him alone. He gives um, 784 skill points. And so this is actually a, another place where you could, you know, feasibly grind some skill points if you like. I prefer the other spot. Some people prefer this one. And then of course you could just come here and rest and he respawns every time. So um, let's talk to this guy. Another merchant. Um, so he sells Gatchin sugar, adamantite scrap. He sells a couple treasure carp scales and dragon spring sake, which I'm actually going to buy just for the heck of it. Um, I'm going to buy these treasure carp scales because you can never have too much treasure carp, treasure carp scales. He also says sells the mottled purple gourd. And this one I actually use quite a bit because this is the terror version of the special medicinal gourds. And of course, I use this a lot when fighting um, the headless and that sort of thing. So we're going to get these. So I need 1800 for this. I need 1000 So that's 2800 plus 500 so I need 3,300 sin in order to get all the stuff I want. I don't even know if I have that much in terms of purses. Um, let's see. So I've got one of these, five of these, 
two of these. Let's see what we can get here. So I need 3,300. So this will give me 2,000. Oh, do I? Oh, heavy coin purse. Here we go. So this will give me 2,000 and 3,000. So I'm just going to use all of these. And that gives me enough, but I don't have any like left in storage. So I'm going to get this. I'm going to get the dry and spring sake just for the sake of getting my buddies to talk about stuff that's important to the story. And I'll get my mottled purple gourd. And that's all I want from here. Also got some gatchin sugar for, for purchase and some adamantite scrap, which is, you know, some pretty high level. Uh, can only be mined in the oldest parts of Ashina. Ancient rock and soil is said to attract the grace of gods, perhaps lending this metal and supple and its supple lending this metal its supple strength. I can't read, it's 1.30 in the morning. Um, <clears throat> okay. There you find where <laughs> so fortunately we were able to get everything. Um, if you need to grind for some sen. I just showed you a couple ways to do it. Uh, let us progress forward into Mibu Village. Um, so these guys are kind of like weird, lifeless, zombie-esque type folks. Um, I tend to just run away from them for the most part. Yeah, I basically have a bu angry mob of villagers here. Um, <clears throat> so legend has it that these villagers are corrupted by the water. So this water is like not real water. It's like stagnated water. So much unlike the uh, water from the divine realm, um, from, from the fountainhead, this is like stagnant water that, that corrupts and like doesn't even quench thirst. The more, and as soon as you start drinking from it, you just crave more and more and more of it. Then eventually you turn into one of these like zombie dudes. Um, all right, let's get all the goodies and you can actually get up here forget if it's a grapple point or if you just have to climb here we go and uh yeah there's the grapple point did i miss an item or is that just a lantern yeah it's just a little lantern so you can drop down through here and there's <laughs> i call this guy basket head basket 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 i am a basket okay hey Basket, 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 basket. Oh. Calm down. You... Are you an honorable person? Yes. <gasps> Thank goodness you are an honorable person. <laughs> Is there something you want to ask? Look, sorry, but uh, if you have questions, I'll have to answer with this basket on my head. What is wrong with this village? I'd sure like to know that too. Before I knew it, everyone had gone insane. For a while, I too was in a daze, but I snapped out of it after I threw up. I was thirsty, so I drank a lot of sake. I'm sure that's what made me throw up. The head priest sometimes treats us to sake, but you know, when you drink sake, you get thirsty. The sake cask runs dry in no time, so everyone has no choice but to drink the water in the ponds and rivers. But the more you drink it, the thirstier you get. Oh, oh, you get thirstier and thirstier. Can't ever drink enough. What is wrong with the villagers? Hmm? No idea. All I know is they all fear fire. For a while, I too was in the same days, and I felt the fear too. An unquenchable fire. Even now, the thought of it gives me chills. An unquenchable fire. The hunter, Inuhiko, started burning pine resin and locked himself in his house. His pine resin burns a long time. It's a real nuisance. Inuhiko is the village outcast. He likes eating wild animal meat in the sort. That's why the head priest doesn't give him any sake. Where is Inohiko's house? Oh! Uh, on the other side of the pond. Inohiko's is the last house on the path. Okay, so he just gave us a little hint to a secret item on the other side of the lake. Tell me about the priest. He's the most important person in the entire village. You can find him in the shrine all the way up the riverside, near the water's source. He told us, let us become citizens of the palace. 
If you drink enough sake, you shall become citizens, he said. Huh? A citizen of the palace? I don't really get it, but that's what he said. Okay. Oh, gotta go, huh? I'll be here, hiding in this basket. Oh, must resist drinking. Okay, so he gave a, shed a little bit more light on just the condition of the villagers and, you know, mentioned a little bit about the water, how you can't, like, drink it. Um, and if you, you know, hadn't noticed, all these villagers are basically insane and uh, not, not the friendly, welcoming sort. All right, so let's hop down here. Fistful of ash. Is that really all that's in here? Fistful of ash. Kind of worthless. Oh, well. All right, grapple out of here. There are some things worth our while around here, though, um, and we are going to get them for sure. So up here, we got some some of the brutish folks uh, with the hammers. See if I can get some stealth action going on here. And just gonna Leroy Jenkins this guy. I uh, got it. Yes. And there's. I think that's it for the fat guys. Some contact medicine. And up here we got some Ashina sake. So we're gonna get get uh, get some booze on after a bit. Um. Some pellets. And one of these big, annoying bell dudes. Take care of him. Via stealth. And, uh... Oh, get away from me. Come on. Stop it. Some of these guys can actually do damage. Some of these guys do have some powerful attacks. So you can't just kind of blow them all off. What? Come on, get off me. Is there another item over here? I can't remember. Doesn't look like it. I think one of these, one of, I forget which enemy type it is specifically, but one of them has a pretty nasty grab attack. So it's not all fun and games around here. And over here, we get ourselves a Gourd Seed. So that is going to give us our ninth healing. Um, it's going to upgrade our... our um, pouch to to level nine basically give us nine healing opportunities per uh pouch yeah this is the guy that's got the grab attack inside of here we get some divine confetti and some yellow gunpowder and on this side Got a lump of fat wax as a drop. Nice. Okay. So over here, um, we can get on top of this building, I believe, via this wooden hut. I think we can just grapple on top of the hut, right? Yeah. Okay. And climb on here. There's an item over there that we need to get. And then we can move along here to get this item just some pellets but you know pellets can uh, get you out of a bind so I think we can is it we can climb up here not I'm missing the jump there we go some adamantite scrap not bad at all okay so I think we got all the stuff down there we killed the the big Ophi dudes um there's definitely some more loot around here. Because we haven't even gotten to the other side of the lake yet. But I think the way to the other side of the lake is via... This here... Sculptor's Idol. And just for good measure, I'll get this Spirit Emblem. And now let us travel to the other side of the lake.
But you can do this earlier. You don't have to circle all the way around. I think you can literally just swim across and you'll you'll be able to get to the other side. I think there's a point where you can grapple up, but this is just the way I choose to do it. All right. I'm just going to scour the the land real quick before I rush in cuz I think there are some of the larger dudes that I may want to sneak up on, but I just got spotted, so it doesn't even matter. All right, get this item. Get this item. And what we are looking for, some adamantite scrap, is this. The pine resin ember, a piece of resin that contains a continuously smoldering flame can be used to upgrade the flame vent. The resin was found in a black pine within the forests of Mibu village. The ever smoldering flames acted as a landmark to find one's way to the village. In time, the villagers came to loathe the flames and the black pines were lost. Those who defended the flame were equally loathed. So this is the only spot in the game where you can find this particular item and it is required to upgrade your flame vent. So, oh gosh. Yeah, I knew there was a, there's some big dudes over here, but I'm not even gonna worry about fighting them. It's more trouble than it's worth, to be honest. Um, so yes, yeah, that is the only spot where you can find that particular item. And uh, it is required for a flame vent upgrade. So, um, and I believe that particular flame vent upgrade is, is also in itself a requirement for another uh, prosthetic tool that I definitely want. Um, I know there's a, there's a way to get up there. I think it's a grapple point that I have to do. Um, yeah, there it is. Perfect. All right. So we got what we came here for, but we might as well get everything else too. Mibu Balloon of Soul. And uh, there's the pond. Um, I don't know if I can actually go back to where I just was. I might just have to use the homeward, homeward idol or whatever it's called to get there. Um, oh, did I miss an item over there? Looks like I may have. Yeah, I don't think I can. Can I jump up on this fence? Yeah, dang it. I'm just gonna use the homeward idol. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab that item and then we are going to progress forward to the next area. Mibu Balloon of Soul is what that was. All right, get out of dodge. I don't know if I need to, oh, hello. Get out of here. All right, I'm just gonna rest to reset everything. Um, nothing we can really do here. No attacks or no abilities that I can gain. Um, so here we have our next mini boss. She does not get aggressive immediately. Um, this is a mini boss that you basically have to kill via all deflects. And I'll show you what I mean by that, because your attacks barely do anything. And um, she she tries to hit you a lot, so it really is a deflect type of boss. So, doesn't matter what you do. Why are you because I'm sad. What are you sad about? I don't know where Lord Sakuza is or what he's doing. It breaks my heart. If I can't see him, I'd at least like to know. But no matter how many letters I send, he never writes me back. And no one will tell me where he is. Actually, sir, can you tell me? Where is Lord Sakuza? I don't know. Oh, you're a liar too. Why must everyone hide him from me? All right. So, you know, her attacks are very flowy and do a Goomba stomp here. 
And you're not going to get much damage on her. Oh, jeez. Hello. She broke my posture. There we go. That's... The Goomba Stomps are, you know, where you get bang for your buck. And she has these big combos. Oops, that wasn't even a sweep attack. That was dumb. All right, come on. Come at me. There we go. Oh, I missed that one. Dang it. Oh, well. She's no slouch. You can't definitely can't sleep on her, because if you do, she will make you pay for it. There we go. Got the Goomba Stomp. Really just a matter of staying on her when she comes after you. Get your Deflex when you can. And there's Death Blow Numero Uno. Oops. Ugh, oh, I got a little lazy with my deflex there. All right. Almost got her. Whoops, she almost got me. All right, almost got her. Come on. One more deflect should do it. There we go. So she's not that bad. You just got to stay on your game and be watchful. Another prayer bead, and we get Breath of Life Shadow. It recovers vitality upon performing a successful death blow. Quite nice. Um, let me see. There's a guy that pops up here. I always just jump over him because he's more trouble than he's worth. And there's a bunch of dudes over here. Um, Take care of this one. I'm going... See, you got a... Got a bell guy over here. So I'm going to use a... Gatchin Sugar. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to... Just going to YOLO it. Not going to waste a Gatchin Sugar. I don't need it. I just gun for him first. Take care of the other... Villagers. Like so. Not too bad. Is there one more? I just heard a thingamajig. I don't know. I don't care. As long as, oh, there he is. It's that same guy. Oh, come on. The one that I jumped over. It's easy. This is like the same guy from Ashton Castle. They try to Makiri counter you. Oh, come on. Or they don't Makiri counter you. You have to Makiri counter them. That's what I meant to say. All right. Normally, I don't have to fight him, but I guess he just was chasing after me. Okay, so this guy in here, this is like the priest figure that the other folks were, the other basket guy was referring to. So yeah, to get into his house, you have to use this revolving door on the floor here. Sneaky, sneaky. There's some stuff in here. A red lump. Some divine confetti. And of course, you can talk to the guy. What are you 
you doing? Ah, it feels... Oh, that's good. It's melting inside. But it's not enough. Keep pouring. Pour until it brims. Come forth, my people. Come forth and drink. Drink! Indulge yourself in the sweet nectar. Come forth as citizens of the palace. One and all. Ah, please, accept us as your humble servants. All right, kind of a weirdo. Um, so the reason why, really, the main reason I came in here is because there's some good stuff. A light coin purse. And we have this thingy here. A prayer bead. Yet another hidden prayer bead. Don't want to leave those behind. And then over yonder, we have adamantite scrap. And that does it for this area in terms of the loot. Um, I am actually going to use the, um, at this point, I'm going to use the Homeward Idol. Go back to the dilapidated temple. Because if you recall, we got a gourd seed. We have lots of booze. Um, so I'm going to hand in the Gourd Seed, increase my healing capacity, and I'm going to uh, get some folks liquored up. Um, and after that will be the end of the episode. So if you're not as interested in like the lore elements of this game, which will be revealed by giving our friends the uh, alcoholic beverages, um, go on and cut it here and, and catch me in the next episode. But if you are interested in that side of this game, then... Stay tuned because we are going to get some dosages of uh, of the game's lore and learn more about some of these characters, namely Emma, Ishin, and the sculptor. As I told you before, the mortal blade should be able to wound. Me. Yes, I shall tell. Of course. All right, we've already done all that, so we can give her the gourd seed. And we can give her a drink. Let's do monkey booze. Here. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is monkey booze. Something wrong? Well, let me try it. Oh, it... It burns so bad. Let's see. Yes, monkey. I seem to have a strong connection with monkeys. You do? Yes. I was rescued by a monkey, after all. <clears throat> you don't believe me, do you? When I was young, I stood alone in the aftermath of a battlefield. I was alone and staring, dumbfounded. <clears throat> I could do nothing. Neither cry, nor even get angry. Complete shock. And then there was a monkey, eating a rice ball. A monkey? Maybe an ape? Maybe. Either way, he made it look so delicious. I remember being angry at that. But then... Then he gave me the rice ball. It tasted so good. What a kind monkey. <laughs> yes. He was a very kind monkey. Okay, let's give her some Ashina sake. I brought sake. Oh my, that is generous of you. I, I accept. <sighs> Delicious. As a doctor, I do have other uses for sake beyond just drinking. For purification? Yes, 
It can also help with those with a low tolerance for pain. But when I was a child, I couldn't stand the smell of it. You've been doing medical work ever since you were a child? Yes. I wanted to be of use to my mentor, Master Dogen. I used to compete with my fellow disciples to treat patients. In those days, arrow and sword wounds were frightfully common. I see. <sighs> What's wrong? It's nothing. Sometimes, Shinobi would come for treatment as well. There was once a rather difficult patient. Difficult in what way? Well, he said very little. I didn't know where he was hurt or how much pain he was in. I had no information to go on. It was maddening. I see. None of this sounds familiar to you? What? No, nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, why not do unrefined? Here, for you. Oh my, if this isn't Lord Ishin's favorite sake, I'll have some. Something. There is something I'd like to ask you. Of course. Who trained you to fight with a blade? A blade? I am a doctor. Yes, but who? Uh, Lord Ishii. <sighs> but I only have a passing interest. I do not believe your skill counts as a mere passing interest. Why did you learn? Well, not to kill people. What do you mean? No. I don't have the slightest desire to kill anyone. It's just... I would want to kill a demon if one were to appear. A demon? <laughs> don't take me seriously. It was only a joke. Okay, so from all of that, we learned that um, Emma is trained... is a trained swordsman. You wouldn't know just by looking at her, but... Uh, she can pack a punch if she were ever to encounter a demon of some sort. Um, so let's go over to Ishin. Treat him to some sake. Is this door closed? There we go. There he is. Sekiro, is that the mortal blade? So what of the rumors? According to the Divine Child of the Inner Sanctum, anyone who draws the mortal blade will meet death. Which means only one such as you can wield it, then. When I drew out the blade and saw its crimson edge, I, too, died once. I see. The crimson edge. Listen, Sekiro. With the mortal blade, you can now kill the undying. A truly terrifying weapon, don't you think? What are you trying to say? That sword is now yours. Who or what will you kill? You must be sure of the answer before drawing it. I have something for you. Ah, Sekiro. You know me well. Why, this isn't monkey booze. <laughs> So this is what it's like to breathe fire. Do you know what other name this sake goes by? I don't. You don't? They call it Shura's Wine. They killed one once long ago. Shura, or something very much like it. What is Shura, exactly? Those who go on killing will eventually become Shura. They don't even remember why. Simply enraptured. They kill solely for the joy it brings them. I see it in your eyes, too. The shadow of Shura. Hmm. Give me cause, and I will kill you. It would do you well to remember that. I see. All right. I'm going to save the uh, other one for the sculptor. Another time, then. Um, and so just then, Ishin made another reference to Shura and said that he would kill us if he had to. 
Um, if you recall, via one of the drinks that we gave um, to the sculptor, he made mention of Shura and that he was himself was going down the path of Shura, and that's why Ishin cut off his arm. So uh, obviously Shura is something serious to be dealt with if it is uh, becoming evident that someone is going down that path. And uh, as Ishin mentioned, it you know happens to someone who um, just gets in the habit of killing and eventually they keep doing it and they don't even know why. Um, so let's talk to the sculptor. We might even be able to do some upgrading here as well. Give him the Dragon Spring Sake. I brought sake. Ooh, Dragon Spring? That's fine quality sake. I'll take it then. Now that really hits the spot. Oh, there's nothing quite like this. I often drank this with Dogen. Emma would keep our cups filled. Have you known Lady Emma for long? Oh, that was a long time ago. I found her on a battlefield. A battlefield? She crept up slowly towards me, her eyes fixed, unwavering on the rice I held in my hand. It became too much to bear, so I gave it to her. Then she just started following me. After that... <laughs> Ooh. Well, a while later, Ashina became a dangerous place for the both of us. Around then, Dogen adopted her as his daughter. I suppose it didn't really matter where she ended up. One thing's for sure. She's happier for the fact she wasn't raised by a shinobi. Okay, so that gives us the other side of the story that Emma described when we gave her some sake as well. Um, so you'll notice one of the common themes in this game is, is adoption. So... Us, Sekiro, we were adopted by Owl. Um, Genichiro was adopted by Ishin. Emma was adopted by Dogen. You know, you see this whole thing. It's kind of a theme throughout the game. Let's see if we can um, upgrade our prosthetic tool. So here we have the items. We just do not have the send. So for each of these, we need a thousand. I know we just blew a bunch of send on um, the stuff we just bought. I don't know if I have enough to even... Yeah, I've got three Litecoin purses. That just ain't going to do it. So we're going to have to come back for those later uh, once we get some more Sen because that will give me a total of like 716 and I need 2,000. So can't do those upgrades quite yet, but that's okay. We'll come back. Um, Okie dokie. Going to warp back to the Ashina Depths, specifically the Water Mill, which is where we left off before. Um, we do have a small bit of unfinished business left in Mibu Village. We did not go all the way to the end of the path. Um, and actually, come to think of it, we are going to do that in the next episode so i think we're gonna go on and call this one here thank you guys so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and found this series quite helpful in your journey through sekiro um be sure to join the squad by subscribing to the channel also leave a like and a comment and uh i guess i'll see you guys next time take care have a good one